once again, my internet apparently is not working too hot today. Let's make sure that everything is good to go here. Should all be set. Alrighty, I see it working on my other end. Thanks so much for being patient. I am here, hello and good morning. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Always kind of a fun little holiday in the mix of February during these winter months. And I'm so excited to be painting some fun Valentine's Day plant theme cards with you today. So going to be just fun, lighthearted, and hopefully useful if you still need a few cards to give for today or this evening. I have these as printable outlines available down below. If you just sign up, you'll get access to the printable outline library. So all of the printable outlines are going to be archived in a Google Drive uh, library. So you can revisit these videos anytime you'd like and always grab the um, printable outlines when you are ready to paint. I have my, one of my favorite palettes that I use sporadically is my nature themed colored palette that I like to call. And so I thought it'd be perfect. It's got the pinks, the greens for today's uh, fun tutorial. I hope you guys are enjoying these uh, paint with me watercolor tutorials. They are designed to be fun, lighthearted, 30 minute, little joyful painting, paint along tutorials. I will have um, a few more that are more in depth. Uh, I'm going to do some eye and nose and face studies for dogs and pets. So it'll just kind of be random. I am going to start with Soil Mates card. I just like that this one will be a better one to warm up with. So if you have this one, go ahead and grab it. Don't forget a paper towel. As you can see, I just keep reusing mine. And then a paint palette, whatever you have for colors here. I think what I'm going to do, I'm okay if my back gets a little messy. I just want to be able to show more of my paint palette for you all. It's so hard to always get everything in the right frame, but still being zoomed in, you know? Let's put the water on this side. Not my usual flow, but I think it'll work. Now, of course, you can feel free to make these any colors that you want. I personally am going to make this pot pink. I'll probably leave the heart white and then see where it takes me from there. This is kind of like that snake house plant, they call it. So I'm going to start with a pointed round brush. This one's a size eight. You could go a little smaller. These are five by seven cards. So it's like doing a five by seven painting. Let's start with a pink. Now, if you don't have pink in your palette, you can go ahead and mix up a red. You could either use mostly water, just a little bit of red paint. It's really hard to mix up pinks without buying a true tube of pink in watercolor, I will say. Um, but you can use red and just use mostly water. The other thing is they do make a white uh, watercolor paint that's still transparent. And I've had um, fun success with mixing a red with that white paint. So just mixing up my pinks here. Okay, today we'll use a lot of the wet on wet technique. I'll start with the left side of my pot where the shadow is going to be the most. Then I'll just grab more water. I just want to start to add in just kind of a fun textured, it's going to be like a ceramic pod, but it's pink. So again, I'll just pull some of that color around, being careful 
around the heart, and then I'll drop in more color, more paint on that left side again. I'm not using my typical Arches paper. I did buy more of a student grade paper through Arteza. I don't know if you guys have ever tried that before. All right, I wanna keep this side nice and light. You could even leave some white of the paper showing. Let me see if I can turn my light down. It looks like it's reflecting quite a bit here. There. Pick up more of that pink color. This is the wet on wet technique. I'm just going to drop it in around and along the bottom there. Can even hit it with a few speckles within the middle. Again, I plan to leave my heart white. And then keeping this side lighter, I'll just drop in a little bit of paint there. So this is what I have right now. I'll just kind of move that so you can see based on the reflection of that um, water. It's kind of kind of tricky to see. Picking up a lot more of that pink paint. I want to add a lot more color to the back of the pot here. So we're just going to fill in those shapes. Like that. If you need to drop any more in, you totally can. It does start to fade as it dries with watercolor. So go ahead and add in any more color that you want to see dropped in. But we can always add in more later. Okay, cute. So next what we'll do is focus on these snake plants. So it is, I would say kind of like a Kelly green color. Let's see if I can slide this down. So I have a hooker's green light and a hooker's green dark they call it, and that is by um, Windsor and Newton. And then I also have a sap green, which is much lighter. I might use a little bit of, I always love mixing yellow ochre with greens. I just think that gives it more of that fun, lighter, brighter, uh, where the light hits the plant. Um, but then I also want to have a nice contrast. Up here I have um, the Payne's Gray, which is more of that blue hint. And when that mixes with green, it makes a really pretty dark green. So those are going to be the colors that I use for the snake plant. Let's start lighter. So here I have some of my yellow ochre mixed with the sap green or hooker's green, light, dark. Hi, Lynn, so good to see you. Thanks for saying hi. If anybody else would like to say hi in the comments, I can see um, your comments pop through. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Tuesday. All right, so I'm just painting this front plant leaf. I don't even know if you could call these leaves in a lighter color here since it is more towards the front, and then we'll show depth as it works its way back. Before this dries, I'll just grab some of my darker color and run it right along the bottom. Hi, Joe. Good morning from Dallas. 
I bet it's warmer there than it is here. Although we are warming up here in Wisconsin, which has been such a, a blessing because winter gets long. Soak up any paint if you feel like you got too heavy. So this is what I have for that front. We'll kind of stick within that same color scheme. So grab a little bit of the lighter green mixtures. And this one will be lighter up top here. So we'll paint that in. This one will be lighter up here. So I think I'll just go ahead and hit this color in some of those areas that need to stay lighter. And let's do this piece is a little bit lighter. Just wanna show a nice variety of color. And again, I'll drop in the darker areas Um, once these are in there. Okay, so there we have those pieces. Let's mix up a darker green, darker to medium green. So here I have kind of that Kelly green and I'll just add a little Payne's gray into there to make it darker. So we definitely want to make that piece darker because it is being overlapped and set kind of more towards the back. So we'll just drop that in there. And you can always take a clean brush and kind of scoop some of that up if you don't want such a harsh uh, blend. If you don't mind that, then just leave it. Same color, I'll just paint the base of this stem or leaf, whatever it might be. I have a snake plant. I should look up all these terms. Okay, so there we have that dark piece. Drop any more in if you think that yours kind of disappeared like mine. Can even run just a really thin stroke along the edge there. And same with this little guy up front. We'll just run it right along the edge to help define it. We need to show a little depth on this one. So just pretend like the shadow is hitting it right here. I like the way that this is drying in shapes like that. So I think I'll just go ahead and leave it. We can always run water over what we've painted to help smooth it out if we want, but I think it'll work out great for what I want. We'll add texture too to these, there's these little stripes. So now I have kind of just a medium green paint this one, being careful not to touch my other leaves. And this part is going to be the dark part and this part will be a little bit lighter here. So I'll just add that. So this is what I have. Mix up a little bit more of that Kelly Green and Payne's Gray. That's what will be on the inside of this top piece here because it is just kind of a skinny shadowed area. We can run it down to darken that one. Some of these need to be redefined because they are blending too much. So I'll just add a little bit there. 
I just love the magic adding in depth like this is just what these um, plants need to help create some depth, but it doesn't have to be super realistic, just enough to give the illusion an understanding of where shadows are. And I see a, just a little bit of a stem here. I'll just paint that in a green. Okay. Maybe a little bit of a shadow here. I have just whatever is left on my brush that I am swiping right along that left edge of that plant. Let me take this off and show you up close here. So it's light and whimsical, but once it dries, I think it'll be really fun. And then we'll go through and add a little texture while we wait for these plant stems to dry. We can add in a little bit of our dirt. Doesn't need much, so whatever light brown that you have, just go ahead and drop that in like little speckles. I like leaving a little bit of white. So just like that, super simple. Okay. Let's work on soil mates. Maybe I'll pause just so you guys can feel like you can catch up a little bit if I went too quickly. If you guys have any questions, of course, feel free to drop those in the comments or in the chat, I should say. Always looking for more recommendations of what you'd like to paint on these paint with me tutorial days. Alrighty, so for soil mates, I think I might do that in kind of a fun brighter green. So kind of that sap green mixed with the yellow and just see how that looks. Feel free to paint it in whatever color you wish. I'm going to stick with my pointed round size eight brush because I can get a nice fine line This is really just about kind of coloring in the lines. Which is kind of nice that you can just drop in the color there. I like some areas to have more color, some less. So in order to do that, you'll just pick up more green. Let's just say we drop it in there. Maybe for these next letters, we pick up a little more yellow. This card might be cute with a more of a fun background too, if you get creative. You could just do a flat wash in the back. Okay, that was quite the natural looking color I just picked there, but let's bring back some other green hues here. Some of the medium color greens, I think. Start out this mates part. And then making sure to show a variety of paint and water. So it looks like watercolor brush lettering. Pick up a little bit of a brighter green. Maybe a little more yellow. I'd love to see your cards. So if you do post them, Please tag me at Windswept Design Studio. I'm over on Instagram. 
I check it a lot there. You could always send me a direct message or email if you aren't into posting. I'd love to see the colors that you picked for your lettering. So here I have another green color. For the E. And I'll grab a little more of the yellow. It could have been cute, I think, in pink, but I like that the pot is kind of the focal point within the painting here, being the only pink thing. Okay, so there I have soil mates written out. <laughs> I think I'm getting very close to having this dry up top here where I can add a little more texture. And then before I do that, I'm just gonna grab a little more of the pinks. And this is gonna layer on really well because our pot has dried. So let's say right up here where the front of the pot overlaps the back, that part just needs to get darker to show and make it look a little more realistic. So. I'll just add it towards those back pieces and right along the top front. And then I'll take that same paint. I don't have too much water on my brush. Just run it along the left side, down below. Once this lettering dries too, we can add a little bit of a shadow, but again, Doing a little bit of that stippling effect kind of gives it the illusion that it's more of like a painted cement pink pot. I just like the way that looks. So feel free to just have fun with the texture in your pot. Maybe your heart needs just a little bit of a darker outline to help define it. Like mine does here. Okay, so for the remaining of my details, I am gonna switch to a little bit of a smaller brush. This one's a size three. Again, every brush is a little different. Um, from brand to brand, you might find that you just need a really tiny liner brush. So whatever you feel comfortable with showing some detail. I'm going to mix the Payne's Gray with my green. And this is what I'll use for the little line details on our snake plant. And we can even define some of the outer edges a little bit more. So let's just start with this one. The snake plant gets kind of these fun little zebra stripes. So we'll just do that in a few, few of the areas here. We don't want to make it too, too much, otherwise it'll get a little too distracting. So we'll do some more up front here. So I'm just kind of doing, I like to think of it as zebra stripes. If they seem too harsh, just get a clean brush and run a little water over those stripes. It helps to soften them. Pick up a little more. Gotta grab a little more Payne's Gray here. And then run it right along the edge of some of these stems. And again, just a few little stripies. Run a few up here.
we're almost done. So adding a few more up top. And we'll just help define that one. This one needs to be a little darker. All right. Cute. So let's add in just a quick little um, shadow here. Normally I like to do shadows in kind of a darker blue like a really light wash of a darker blue. And I plan to do that. I might just add in, drop in a little bit of the pink. So for my shadow, I am going to use the Payne's Gray. If I can find a clean part on my palette, I just want the slightest, slightest amount of Payne's Gray. So mostly water, just a little bit of paint. And let's see, the light is hitting from the right-hand side, so it's going to cast its shadow to the left. So starting up right around the base of our pot, and then it's going to extend just a little bit to the right, but it'll be mostly to the left. So something like this. Let's grab a little more of that Payne's Gray and drop it right along. I gotta grab some more. Drop it right along the pot bottom where it's the darkest. And that's just gonna help ground our pot so it's not floating. So I think I'll be done with this one for now and we can always tweak things afterwards but just see how you like it once it dries and let's go ahead and move on to our next card okay super fun so here we have two standing pots those will be in wood so just a light brown and these details in the plants up top here aren't going to be quite as detailed. Uh, they're smaller. So let's go ahead and start painting in the wood. I switched back to my size eight pointed round brush. So I'll just grab a little bit of the brown. I have, I can't even tell you what color brown I have in this palette right now. It's not my typical Van Dyke brown. It's a little bit lighter than that. Um, the other thing that you can do is mix it with a little bit of yellow ochre. I'll dab my paper towel. I don't want too much. But these are going to be pretty simple. So just kind of coloring in those outlines if you are using the outline. Like that. And then we'll hit it along the base here. Okay, we'll let that dry. And do our other one here. There's one leg. Just one nice swoop of the brush. And picking up a little more paint, the base can be a little bit darker. Just to show the contrast and depth. And then I see that I forgot the leg in the back. That one can also be darker. All right, so here I have that. Let's add that darker brown into the base on our left plant stand. Okay, awesome. So let's have fun with this. Um, let's do, I already did a pink pot in the other ones. 
We could leave one of the pots white. We could do it a terracotta pot. So that would be more of the burnt sienna colors, which I actually don't think I have in this palette. But I could use the orange that I have here and mix it with brown. So let's go ahead and try one of those. So here I have orange. And I'm going to grab a little more of my brown color here. And let's add in maybe a little bit of red will help to warm that up and not be too orange. Okay, let's make this pot the terracotta pot. Again, feel free to look up house plants. If you have a favorite pot at home, you can mimic that. It'll keep the shadow more towards the left. So just using the most paint that I have on my brush on that left side, kind of working around that little leaf that overlaps there. And then we'll get lighter as we move our way to the right-hand side of this pot. Can even leave some white. So this is what I have right now. Let's grab just the brown color. And we can drop in some speckles. It's kind of a lot. I know it'll dry lighter. And that'll just kind of add that little bit of texture there. And moving to the right hand side here. All right, that's all I'll do for that pot right now. I might add more to it on this left one. Let's make it a white one. So the trick with white is to use more of the blue shades to create the depth. So kind of like we did with our shadow, I like to use Payne's Gray, just a really light amount of it. So here I'll just pull some on my palette add a lot of water, even dab my paper towel so I can't, or that I can um, control it. And we'll do a shadowy area on that left side. We'll kind of paint it along the edge of the wood. Still feel like I have too much, so I'll get rid of that paint on my brush. And then I'll bring it around to the front, along the bottom. We will work with mostly the water, the paper color, the white paper color to create this white pot. So we are just painting shadows right now. So this is what I have. Might even clean some of that up. But we'll keep it, keep it clean and simple for now. I need to switch to a different size brush. So here I'll grab my pointed round brush, that smaller size three that I used on the last card to create those details up here in the plant. I think what I'll do is make this plant nice and dark, this like tall grass plant. So let's grab some of that Kelly green color, just like a traditional green. And I'll mix it with Payne's Gray. And we're going to do varying hues of that. So just kind of have a variety on your palette ready to go. Some will be light, some will be darker, but overall that'll be kind of the tone of this plant. So super thin strokes 
which just means lighter pressure, like that. Let's grab a little more water. I just want to show a little variety. Just going to paint a few in. I think I'll add a little yellow. I can't get away with painting plants without adding in a little bit of the yellow ochre just to give it a little more brighter life. I'll use that for my piece that goes right in front of this pot here. Maybe this one right here. This one. I just kind of want to show a variety of greens. I think that helps to create more of a dynamic looking uh, watercolor painting. Um, pretty soon here, now we can start using some of these darker colors for some of these back ones. Like there. This one. See, nice variety. Once that dries, that'll be a little bit darker. This one in the back. Kind of a fun curve shape. Let's see. Do this one darker. I go back to that lighter green. Add it up top here. Into this one. I just didn't want any of the plant pieces to have the same color right next to each other. Okay, fun. I can see that there was a back to my pot that I missed, so I'll just grab the Payne's Gray, and I am just going to paint in the back shadowed area, like that. Maybe while I have that still on my brush, I'll just hit, let's see, so our shadow is coming this way, so we definitely need kind of a darker line to go there. Right along the left side of our plant stand. Along the bottom. Just gives it a little more life. I'm loving this little brush. I just kind of found it in my stash. Nice and small and pointed round tip to it. If you don't have a pointed round, more detailed style brush, I recommend getting one of those. And with the same color, this Payne's Gray, so anything dark that you have, like a dark blue, I'll just use it to create the shadow area on this plant stand too. So running it right underneath there. I just love the way that this color layers over blue, or over brown, I should say. I'll bring it down the leg, even up along the edge of my pot. And that leg, So this one's a little more lifelike based on the colors here. I'll bring that up closer here. Okay. So this is more like a fiddle leaf, fiddle fig leaf plant. but I wanna use kind of some of those lighter colors just to help contrast it from the left plant. So let's start there and then I'll work some sap greens in there. Okay, let's start, I'm gonna start from the top left here with this 
nice big leaf, just painting it in. So you can see I had quite a bit of water there. And I will do this one over here in that same color. And kind of leave the pooling color more towards that other leaf because that'll show a nice depth of color once that dries. It'll show a shadow. Let's do this little guy here in the middle, keeping that one a little bit lighter. Just trying to do a few leaves that aren't necessarily touching. How about this one over here? Hope you guys are able to listen to some music while you're doing this. I always think that's the best to paint and listen to some relaxing music. All right, let's add this one. I'm just kind of picking a few leaves to make in this color. Put this one down here. This one over here. Then after this, I'll pick up more of the traditional medium greens. This one might dry a little too harsh, so I'll just run my brush to help scooch that color and blend it in. All right, so picking up some more of those traditional green colors can kind of create a mixture with the paint color we were just using with that one. Again, dab it on your paper towel. So just create a nice variety. Let's see here. Kind of tricky to not lose track of all these leaves. Painting in a few. I know I'm missing this one right here. I haven't decided exactly how I want to paint that one. And what color. All right, got to pick up some more of that paint. That one, we'll do this one and that green. Let's see, that's what I have right now. I think I wanna just add a little darker amount to this one. So I just picked up a little more that had that Payne's Gray in it. It looks like it wants to bleed into the other leaf I just painted, but that's okay. This is kind of a lighthearted um, painting anyways. I do like the darker color, so I'll grab some more of that. Paint it in this one. Grab that same darker color here for this leaf. Again, pushing that color down into where the shadow would most likely be, which is down here. Hmm, let's see. So we're getting really close. I just have a few little pieces here. I think I'll grab some of that lighter color again now that I see the balance. Just add that to these last few leaves. Okay, so that's what I have for those. Haven't done the stems yet. So I will switch back to a nice pointed round brush for control. The stems, I think I'll make a nice dark color that uh, Payne's Gray is super powerful in pigment color. It's super rich. 
So just being careful not to add too much. And I will just go ahead and paint that stem all the way down. Let's see, I have one over here. And while I have that on my brush, I'll just kind of use it to connect some of those little green stems going into the leaves. Such a great liner color to help differentiate. So if you have some leaves that look like they blended right into each other, just use that to drop in and create the separation. And I don't want to get too detailed. They're just fun, whimsical. Let's add one there. So here I have my plants, which I think look nice and cute for what I'm looking for um, in this little five by seven card. And now let's do our lettering. This is smaller lettering here, so I think I'll stick with this tiny brush. And I am going to do it in a nice bright pink for Valentine's Day. Again, feel free to choose whatever color that inspires you in your palette. You do not have to follow along just have this really pretty pink that I don't get to use very often, so I am going to go for it. And I am going to vary it like I did in my other ones. So some of these letters are gonna have a ton of paint, some of them are going to be a little bit lighter. This is not traditional brush lettering. More so just coloring in the lines. I like the way that these lighthearted hearted cards are super easy to make, especially if you download and can print right on your watercolor paper. If you can't, all you have to do is print the outline on, if you can print, Print the outline on a regular piece of paper, printer paper, and you can trace it. So the good old fashioned tracing method works great. And um, there's a couple ways that you can do that with a light box. If you have one of those, those are super handy. You could hold it up to a window, but you'll need some way to do a tracing. Sometimes that is with tracing paper and a graphite rubbing. So hopefully you were able to um, trace this to make it just a little more fun, easier, approachable. I love growing together. I feel like there's a lot of plant lovers so these cards will be perfect. We actually do plants for our Valentine's Day uh, gift. So we skip the flowers and just do a plant every year. I will say most of them I still have over the last six or so years. And some unfortunately have not made it and are not here today with me, but I always know the plants that I get for each year for Valentine's Day. Not sure that I'll do a shadow on the floor of these plant stands. I think they have too much detail. Um, I think it could be very effective to do a shadow, but I'm just going to skip it. All right, almost done with this lettering. 
And there we are. Okay. Feel free to add in any other details that you think could be missing in yours. Just gonna set my palette aside for a second so I can see these two laying next to each other. Oops. Super cute little set here of cards. Again, feel free to add in your own colors, your own twist to this. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. All you have to do then is go ahead and fold it on up. They will create a five by seven card. If it's a five by seven envelope or a seven envelope. All right, always a little tricky when the card is on thicker paper. If you have a bone scoring tool and do it the right way, that would make it a little bit easier, but here we are. Super fun. All right, you guys, I hope you all enjoyed today's paint with me tutorial. Again, if you would love to post your cards and put them on your Instagram, just be sure to tag me. I would love to see them. It's always hard to be painting on your own and not get to see what you all are creating on the other end. So would love to see them. And thanks so much for being here. I will be back next Tuesday, whether it be live or pre-recorded. I have pre-recorded ones ready to go for when our baby arrives, which our due date is next week, Thursday. So we know that he could be coming any day now. So anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your Valentine's Day, and I look forward to chatting with you all next week and in the future Tuesdays.